I think the talent is very visible at the Danish uh, at the Danish school system, and especially after that, you can see that esports has become an integrated part of the of the of the school system. Uh, many places you can see how it motivates a lot of students to actually go to school and and, and do their homework and, and do good in school. I think we are really good at finding talents. Um, there's been a lot of experienced players who's been willing to take uh, gambles on, on talents, even like me uh, back in the days. So I think the fact that people are trying to find talents and, and make them even better and you know, slowly building up a system like that, we have been really good at and doing it for years now as well. The hardworking people who's, uh, who's uh, putting in uh, all the extra hours and uh, who has been helping to, to, to get like a common understanding about what eSport is and what CSGO is and, and how we can actually uh, use esports, uh, no matter the game, uh, pretty much to 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 help uh, improve and develop our our young talent uh, in the school. I took the opportunity and I played good and I proved that I could. Damage coming from the flames. Stewie's lucky to be alive and Magus wants to hunt him, but does he anticipate twists this close? On the other side of smoke, excellent flash! Top player as well, uh, back in the day, so yeah, I'm, I'm just like an, uh, like many other Danish players uh, being a talent and, and giving a great chance and actually taking it. When you win a major and you're going to the town hall of Copenhagen and uh, eating pancakes, uh, that is a tradition in Denmark for, for great sports achievements. Um, that puts a question in, in to, to, uh, to all the, the people out there thinking, is this a sport? Um, having politicians going in and approving the game and, and acknowledging our performances. Australian guys, they are definitely role models. It's also some guys help, but I would say that the biggest credit, if you look away from from our results and our performances, I think that will go to the to the people behind us, Um They have had a tremendous way, and they have a background in traditional sports, and has been able to um, how do you say sell the story in some way to to the media and and to the press and to all the the influential people back in Denmark. I mean, there's no doubt that Estrada has played a big role in, in pushing Counter-Strike into the Danish mainstream media. There's an ancient saying, when you are low on utility, allow the smoke to clear, and only then can you bunny hop to victory. It's just the success of them. It's the, it's the awareness. It's the professionality. You know, they always come out to tournaments. They always conduct themselves well. They always, you know, behave nice in interviews. They give you, they give you something. It's not like it's, it's just pale football players. Sometimes they actually give you some, some good stuff to work with. But they do it in a, they say, fashionable manner. Uh, they do it under controlled circumstances. And I think the Danish media has loved the fact that we now have this new. New scene emerging, you know, that is not just boring football player or boring handball players who've been schooled their entire life to say the same answers over and over again. Dolphin is pretty clever. An owl. An owl, that's good, yeah, yes. An owl. And an owl. An owl. TV2 is such a mass media in Denmark. TV2 can have the ability to, to tell the stories, and if you are telling the stories about the person, make the person tell that. Uh, Carrigan is an uh, accountant, as an educated accountant. You know, the, the, the things like that, uh, that, that uh, putting them into a perspective, so they are getting to be uh, human beings and not someone who is sitting in a basement. I think the most important thing about uh, Danish CS is we have so many in-game leaders um, in different various of teams. Uh, we have um, Emerson, we have uh, Hunden who takes up young players, we have Snappy and Heroic, we have Glaive, and then me and um, some international teams. So I think it all comes down to that we have so many great in-game leaders who have their own unique way of playing and people just know how to play within systems. So I, I think that's that's why Danish CS is, is, is a competitive uh, uh, nation in CS. It was actually a popular thing to be the in-game leader in Denmark, whereas if, if you look at the teams today, there's so many top teams out there who don't have a designated in-game leader. Somebody just has to take the role. I mean, Faceplan is a great example. Potentially could be one of the best teams in the world, but right now they don't have a designated in-game leader. Nico is, is just, you know, doing the role because nobody else can do it. So I, I think Denmark have always had the culture where being an in-game leader is a respected job. You know, it, it requires a lot of authority as well. And I think, you know, the fact that we've had so many great throughout the time, Sonic back in 1.6 as well, it's just been, been fostering talent, you know, it's, it's been inspiring people to, to be an in-game leader. And I think that's a big part of the reason why we have so many great, great in-game leaders within the Danish ranks. I think we are understanding slowly that it's 
it's a serious thing, you know. It's not just like a hobby anymore. It's actually a job now, and uh, I think the the younger talents is is understanding that if they want to get to the top level, they need to, to be a good teammate, they need to uh, work hard, they need to understand that it's it's not easy getting there. You have to work hard for it and you have to dedicate yourself to it. And it's just like being a professional football player or handball player. You actually need to dedicate your whole life into it. It's growing day by day right now. You see more and more medias entering. You see more and more specified projects. You know, we have uh, big companies within Denmark who, who really put in uh, a lot of money into Counter Strike right now. Danish TV2 uh, is a great example. They, they really they bought the rights for, for Counter Strike for the next four or five years, I believe, which is you know a big commitment to make for a, a big TV channel. So Counter Strike is going mainstream, and, and more and more people want a piece of that cake. And I can't see it go anywhere within the near future. Everyone, from the smallest child, have been sitting there watching their heroes uh, playing themselves. They can even, in a way, go into a server, play against the Counter Strikes Messi. Hey, you can't go into a come now from the street and play against Messi. You can do that in this sport, and that's amazing. So then, bring it out against the roof. No doubt about that.